Back to the Future is one of the most iconic franchises in the history of cinema, which defined the pop culture of the 80s. An exciting story about a teenager who accidentally goes into the past while getting into a number of ridiculous situations laid the standard of teen cinema for many years to come. And today, we propose to go on an exciting journey through time and space to find out what happened to the actors of this unforgettable saga after the filming was complete and why some of them have not been able to gain a foothold on the heights of Hollywood. Welcome to the Biographer Express channel. Get comfortable, we're starting. One of the most memorable images of the film, the role of the half-mad scientist Emmett Brown went to Christopher Lloyd for a reason. The actor used to play non-standard characters, villains, bad guys, and eccentric persons having a specific appearance and bright charisma. Therefore, before filming, Christopher had already formed a kind of role and, in fairness, he coped with it coolly. Lloyd began his acting career performing on the theater stage, but his first experience in cinema brought him a triumph. In 1975, he was in the cast of Mila's Foreman's cult film One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, which as a result received five Oscars. It also brought the actor his first recognition. It was followed by films and TV series, the most famous of which were Taxi, Going South, The Postman Always Rings Twice with Jack Nicholson, Cheers, To Be or Not To Be, Star Trek III The Search for Spock. So, in Taxi, the actor got the role of a former hippie and a priest who dabbled in intoxicating potions. His character was so liked by the audience that he brought the actor an Emmy in the nomination Best Performance of a Male Supporting Role. But of course, for many, Christopher Lloyd is Emmett Doc Brown, whose exclamation, 1.21 gigawatts, remains one of the most iconic lines of the film. 1.21 gigawatts! 1.21 gigawatts! Great Scott! The character of Doc Brown is close to me. He changed the future, invented a time machine. I like his energy, his constant delights, Lloyd said about his hero. The commercial success of the first film ensured the release of two more parts, in 1989 and 1990. The franchise brought the creators of the film $958 million, and Christopher Lloyd got the status of a global star. From that moment on, the actor was offered mainly first-plan roles. In 1985, he appeared in the main cast of the comedy thriller Clue, and three years later appeared in the role of the insidious Judge Doom in the detective comedy Who Framed Roger Rabbit, and a man with a mental disorder in the comedy The Dream Team. Christopher got a new round of fame from the story about the infernal Adams family where he got the role of Uncle Fester. The family comedy was a great success and received a sequel in 1993. During the 90s, the actor's filmography was replenished with such works as the retro comedy Radioland Murders where Lloyd appeared in the image of sound designer Zoltan, the fantastic comedy My Favorite Martian, the dramatic thriller Things to Do in Denver When You're Dead, the family comedy Renekid, as well as Rasputin's voice acting in the cartoon Anastasia. Despite hard work, the end of the 90s and the beginning of the 2000s brought not so many big hits. In a series of not very successful shows that closed after the first season, the fantastic drama Interstate 60 and the drama Wit stood out. Gradually, the tendency of the actor's switch to secondary and episodic roles was visible. Despite this, Christopher's projects were pleasing in their diversity. The list included Numbers, Master of Horror, Fringe, The Big Bang Theory. But over time, there were more and more passing, low-grade and sometimes even completely trash movies in the career of an actor. Over the past 10 years, the most iconic projects of the actor have been the series A Million Little Things, The Mandalorian, as well as a regular participant in the series Granite Flats, where he got the role of Professor Stanfield Hargraves, a smart and teasing English teacher with a specialty in Shakespeare. In 2021, the Adult Swim channel presented a new promo video of the animated series Rick and Morty, where Lloyd starred with Jaden Martell. The choice of Lloyd for the role was not accidental because the creators of Rick and Morty were largely inspired by the trilogy Back to the Future. Morty. <coughs> well, oh. 
In addition, the actor also repeatedly reprised the role of Doc Brown, including voicing the video games Lego Dimensions and Back to the Future the game. Christopher Lloyd's schedule, as in his youth, is very tight despite his respectable age. But in his spare time, Christopher considers staying in nature to be an excellent cure for everything in the world. He is a big fan of gardening, fishing, cycling, or just contemplating in the garden. The career of actress Claudia Wells, who played the role of the main character's girlfriend named Jennifer Parker in the film, was not so successful. She made her big screen debut in the family drama named Family, appearing in several episodes. Since then, she has been invited to various family-oriented TV shows. But the actress did not get major roles, with the exception of the American sitcom Off the Rack, which lasted only seven episodes. Participation in Back to the Future was supposed to be a breakthrough for the young actress. If trouble hadn't happened during the filming, Wells' mother was diagnosed with cancer, and therefore the actress took a break from her career. As a result, the role of Jennifer went to Elizabeth Shue. After the tragic events, Claudia became a passionate activist and in 2001 founded the We Spark Cancer Support Center as a resource for families affected by cancer. In 2008, she returned to active filming and appeared in the TV series The Mentalist and in the film Still Waters Burn. After a long break in 2011, she played a small role in the independent sci-fi film Alien Armageddon, which earned a low rating and not the best reviews. In 2015, Wells got the opportunity to reprise her role in the film Back to the Future, 26 years after her last appearance in the film. She voiced Jennifer Parker in Back to the Future the Game. As you can see, Wells' film career has not gone well and the actress's filmography is filled mainly with low-quality projects. But an enterprising actress does not sit idly by and acting is not her main source of income. Back in the early 1990s, Wells opened the Armani Wells clothing store in Studio City, California, which she continues to run in 2023. Therefore, we can consider her a successful businesswoman who found herself in another industry. This is the same bully with a stupid expression on his face, Biff Tannen, who bullied the main character and prevented the reunion of his parents. He was the antagonist of all three parts, but in different guises. In the second part, the actor played Biff's grandson named Griff, and in the third, he had the role of Biff's great-grandfather, Buford. In reality, Thomas F. Wilson is a man with broad interests, for whom filming is rather an addition to the main life hobby. Before his first recognizable role, he participated in improvisations with other aspiring comedians, among whom was 21-year-old Jim Carrey, and his career began in this way. In addition, he played cameo roles in several TV shows, The Facts of Life and Knight Rider with David Hasselhoff. After Back to the Future brought him wide fame, Thomas actively and quite successfully built an acting career. Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman, Born to be Wild, Sabrina the Teenage Witch, Freaks and Geeks were among his projects, and he also voiced various animated characters in the SpongeBob SquarePants franchise. Rio Cartoons, Adventure Time with Finn and Jake, and Dragons, Riders of Burke, as well as in the TV series The Spectacular Spider-Man, what he does to this day. In the mid-2000s, you might have noticed the actor in famous TV series such as House MD, Bones, and Ghost Whisperer. In addition, Thomas managed to reunite with Christopher Lloyd, the performer of the role of Doc in the film Camp Nowhere. In 2013, the actor also starred in the comedy The Heat with Sandra Bullock and Melissa McCarthy. In addition to his extensive acting career, Wilson is engaged in painting in his spare time, and many of his pictures are devoted to classic children's toys. In 2006, he was selected to participate in the California featured series at Disneyland. By the way, let's go back to his comedy career. In 2009, he released his first stand-up and second comedy album, Tom Wilson, Bigger Than You. From 2011 to 2014, Wilson hosted the Big Pop Fun podcast on the Nerdist Network. 
In the podcast, Tom talked about his career and also had informal conversation with friends in show business. Wilson currently maintains his YouTube channel where he regularly shoots vlogs. As of March 2023, his channel had more than 36,000 subscribers. The role of George, the father of the main character, went to Crispin Glover, who by the time of filming had already had several significant works in the films Racing with the Moon and My Tutor, released in 1984. However, they say that greed and star disease blinded the actor so much that he requested a $1 million fee for his further participation. In addition, Glover showed himself on the set as a man with a bad character, who criticized the script, his fee, and demanded an inadequate expansion of his role in the sequels of the picture. This led to the fact that Universal Picture Studio refused the actor's participation in the sequels, and replaced him with Jeffrey Weissman having disguised him under Glover. Even despite the damaged reputation, the directors continued to invite Crispin to the roles, arguing their decision with the great talent of the actor. And the 90s were marked by the most successful period of his career. He appeared in the main roles in such films as Where the Heart Is with Uma Thurman, Wild at Heart with Nicolas Cage, Ferdy Dirk, What's Eating Gilbert Grape with Johnny Depp and Leonardo DiCaprio, the People vs. Larry Flint with Woody Harrelson. In 2000, he appeared in the acclaimed action movie Charlie's Angels, playing the role of Thin Man. Interestingly, initially his character had lines, but the actor insisted that they be removed from the script. Glover thought his character was unique without a voice, and it worked. Thin Man and his performance turned out to be both frightening and interesting. The artist was so good that he returned to work in the continuation of the story. Most of the projects of the next 10 years are passing or very low-grade pictures. A relative exception is the fantasy drama Beowulf, where the actor was lucky enough to work with Anthony Hopkins, Angelina Jolie, and John Malkovich, as well as try out the motion capture technology thanks to which his character Grendel was created. The picture received generally positive reviews and barely paid off the production costs. In recent years, the actor's most striking works have been cameo roles in Alice in Wonderland and Hot Tub Time Machine. From 2017 to 2021, Glover played the recurring role of Mr. World in the Star series American Gods. I enjoyed playing the character and I think the original book and the concepts behind it are really beautiful, he said of his work in the project, and it is worth noting that the role of the antagonist turned out to be quite impressive for him. And in 2022, the series Guillermo del Toro's Cabinet of Curiosities premiered, where the actor starred in the company of Andrew Lincoln. He got the role of a mysterious artist with a dark past whose works contained terrifying secrets. No, thank you. Glover managed to try himself in other directions during his career. In the late 80s, he started releasing music. In 1989, during a break in filming, Glover released an album in the style of marginal music named The Big Problem Does Not Equal The Solution, The Solution Equals Let It Be, and also recorded a version of Michael Jackson's song Ben, timed to coincide with the release of his 2003 film Willard. In addition to music, he founded the company Volcanic Eruptions, which serves as a platform for the release of films written and produced by Glover. Later, the actor moved behind the camera and shot two films in the style of surrealism, What Is It and It Is Fine, Everything Is Fine, which premiered at the Sundance Festival in 2005 and 2007 respectively. The films have been recognized by associations such as the Ann Arbor Film Festival and the Sitkis Film Festival. In 2013, Glover received recognition for his directorial work when the Museum of Art and Design in New York organized the series of films It Is Crispin, Hellion Glover. The program consisted of screening of all his directorial works, live performances, and speeches. The actor also proved himself in the writing. He owns the authorship of more than 20 books, which in fact are an interpretation of already known works. So, one of his works, Rat Catching, is based on the publication of Henry C. Barclay, released in 1896. And until we move on to the next hero, we suggest you click on the subscribe button and the bell, 
so you definitely won't miss new videos about your favorite movies and actors. Subscribe and we continue. Leah Thomas was a relative newcomer at the time of the film's release. In Back to the Future, she managed to play the role of Marty McFly's mother Lorraine who unknowingly fell in love with her own son when he traveled to the past, posing as a man named Calvin Klein. Since childhood, Leah has been professionally engaged in ballet and received a scholarship to the American Ballet Theater. For the first time on the big screen, the future actress made her debut in 1983 starring in Jaws 3D, and then in the film directed by Michael Chapman, All the Right Moves, where Tom Cruise became Leah's partner. After a couple of not very successful roles, the actress was lucky to be on the set of Robert Zemeckis' film as well as in the sequels Back to the Future. A successful adventure comedy gave the young actress a lucky ticket. And soon, she appeared in Harry Weiner's adventure film Space Camp, where Joaquin Phoenix became her partner. And in 1987, she participated in Howard Deutsch's melodrama Some Kind of Wonderful in one of the main roles, for which she received the award for Best Actress. The list of landmark projects included participation in the popular show Tales from the Crypt, where she got a cameo role of a woman of the oldest profession, as well as the main role in the television movie Nightbreaker, for which she was nominated for the ACE Award for Achievements in Television. In the period from 1995 to 1999, the actress starred in the title role in the melodramatic comedy series Caroline in the City. Her character, Caroline Duffy, was a cartoonist from Manhattan who worked and built a personal life when faced with curious situations. There were many cameos in the film and Matthew Perry appeared in the role of Chandler in several episodes. For this work, Leah received the People's Choice Award in the nomination Best Female Role. But since the beginning of the millennium, you can count a dozen of her really successful roles. On average, the actress plays in two to three projects a year. The cameo roles in the TV series Law & Order Special Victims Unit, CSI Crime Scene Investigation, Greek, The Goldbergs, Starring roles in the TV series Jane Doe, Eye of the Beholder and Switched at Birth are among them. In addition, the actress is actively engaged in the voice acting of cartoons and animated series. But the actress tried to realize her talent not only on the big screen. From 2011 to 2017, Thompson starred in the popular Freeform show. And in 2014, she participated in the 19th season of Dancing with the Stars with her partner Artem Chingvintsev. The pair were eliminated in the quarterfinals, taking sixth place. Now the actress is involved in the Canadian drama series The Spencer Sisters in which she plays the main role. It's beyond fun to be half of The Spencer Sisters. My major focus lately has been directing, but this show was just too delicious to pass up, said Leah Thompson. By the way, which character from Back to the Future did you remember exactly and why? Be sure to share with us in the comments, we will be happy to discuss the favorites with you. Michael J. Fox played the main character of the movie Back to the Future, Marty McFly, traveling through time. Fox was the first choice of director Robert Zemeckis for the role of Marty, but at first he had to refuse to participate in the film due to participation in another movie, Family Ties, and for a few weeks he was replaced by Eric Stoltz. The reason was that the producers of the TV series categorically opposed the fact that Michael starred in parallel in another picture. But in an attempt to replace McFly by the studio with Eric Stoltz, failed. It turned out that he did not have the necessary charisma and charm. Finally, the producers managed to negotiate concessions. It was assumed that Michael would be filming Family Ties from 10 in the morning to 6 in the evening, and after that, he could be starring in a Zemeckis film. By the time of participation in Back to the Future, Fox already had a good experience of filming on various television programs. His film career began in his youth. 
He appeared in cameo roles in the TV series Family, The Love Boat, and The Magic Lie. And at the age of 15, he got his first major role in the multi-part project Leo and Me. And from that moment, the young actor saw his future only on the set. The tenacity and perseverance of the Canadian young man led him to the production of the TV series Palmerstown USA, Trapper John M.D., and the comedy Midnight Madness. The young man was still wanting for a more solid role than the images of teenagers of the second plan. And after a while, Hollywood gave him such a chance. He was invited to one of the main roles in the TV series Family Ties. The role of Alex P. Keaton brought the artist three Emmy Awards and a Golden Globe. But of course, the real recognition was brought to the actor by the project of Robert Zemeckis. Despite all the risks and difficulties that Michael had to go through, it was shooting until 3 in the morning and a threat to life while working on the third part of Back to the Future, when during the hanging scene, the rope tightened too tight and blocked the actor's breath. After these, he woke up a world-famous celebrity. He began to be offered key roles in major projects. In 1985, Rod Daniels' comedy Teen Wolf was released, which grossed more than $80 million at the box office. And two years later, there was the comedy The Secret of My Success, which grossed $111 million and was nominated for a Golden Globe Award. Soon viewers saw Fox in Brian De Palma's drama Casualties of War, where Sean Penn became his partner. The film was not a box office success, but it received the approval of film critics. And then the actor's filmography was replenished with such projects as Doc Hollywood, The Hard Way, For Love or Money, Life with Mikey, Spin City, which had high ratings among the audience. The last major role of the actor was the image of Frank Bannister in the comedy horror The Frighteners. This picture barely paid off its budget, but received the prize of the Sitka Spanish International Film Festival for the best special effects. It is not known how the career of a promising actor would have developed if not for one thing. Already during the filming of the last picture, symptoms of a terrible disease appeared. In the late 90s, Michael told his fans the sad news that back in 1991, he was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, which is most common in the elderly. Because of this, the actor had to take a break from acting. At first, the syndrome manifested itself in tremors and muscle stiffness. But then, he began to forget everything that had been happening lately. Short-term memory suffered the most. If earlier the actor's hobby was memorizing lines, now all roles with a large number of words disappeared. Since the beginning of the 2000s, he began to act periodically, appearing in series and television shows in supporting roles. In 2009, Michael received another Emmy for a guest role in the series Rescue Me, and from 2013 to 2014 starred in the NBC sitcom The Michael J. Fox Show. For many years, the actor played both the roles of himself and other characters. Michael was also actively engaged in dubbing films and TV series. Homeward Bound 2 Lost in San Francisco, Stuart Little, and Back to the Future from Telltale Games, The Game, were among his works. After he was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease in the 90s, Fox devoted himself to studying the disease and raising funds for research. The illness is a really hard test for Fox. He admits that he can draw, dance, or play the guitar, but he copes with it thanks to his wife Tracy, whom they met on the set of Family Ties. Throughout the years, she has been by his side and supported her husband on the way in the fight against an incurable disease. In 2022, the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences awarded him the Gene Hersholt Humanitarian Award for his work. Well, more recently, the actor decided to finally leave the cinema, as his illness began to progress. But despite this statement, the directors do not give up trying to attract him, at least for the voice acting of cartoons. By the way, after the diagnosis of the disease, Michael started writing books. To some extent, this calmed him down and gave him hope. A book of memoirs, No Time Like the Future, An Optimist Considers Mortality, has recently been published. There, the actor tells about life with his diagnosis, about what gives him little joys. For example, playing golf or spending time with Keith Richards or watching TV series. At the beginning of 2023, the documentary Still, a Michael J. Fox movie in which Fox played himself and talked about his struggle with Parkinson's. As you can see, each of the cast was able to achieve its own peak and find themselves in this world. 
If you are interested in watching the life of actors, then be sure to click on the link that appeared on the screen to go on a journey and find out how the fates of the actors of another cult franchise, The Mummy, have changed. Well, for today, our video has come to an end. Don't forget to like it. Biographer Express was with you. See you soon.